Hi guys, so today we're going to continue the, the uh, blockchain security series of video and uh, I noticed that uh, last week with the uh, fuzzing Ethereum smart contract video um, a lot of you are really interested about this subject so today I decided to speak about um, smart contract analyzer and especially we're going to play with uh, Mitril that is one of the most uh, famous one and was one of the most efficient so the reason I want to discuss about analyzer it's mainly because uh, last week I mentioned that um, for fuzzing with uh, HNI it's complicated because you need to create your own invariant and so on. So you need to have some manual work to be done. And I want to show you uh, kind of the opposite where you basically have nothing to do except just run the tools and after that um, try to understand what's the issue um, and how you can uh, fix them. So uh, for that, we're going to use this example, the etherstore.sol. Uh, so I will let you, um, if you want, you can pause the video and try to find where is the vulnerability. Uh, and um, I mean, it's a really classical vulnerability. Uh, and basically, we're going to use that as an example. So we're going to use uh, for that Mitril, uh, that is uh, a tool developed by uh, Consensus uh, Diligence. And basically, this tool will analyze the EVM bytecode in order to find some uh, security vulnerability. So it will be some static analysis in that case. And uh, it will be really easy to use and really easy to install. So for the installation, you just need to do like pip3 install Mitril. And after that, you will be able to use like MIT analyze and you are providing your file. You can even provide some uh, some by EVM bytecode directly, so doing some analysis on the at the bytecode level and so on. So uh, that's the contract. Um, so that's uh, oh, but and by the way, this contract come from one awesome um, blog post and content created by my friend from Sig Sigma Prime. So Solidity Security Blog, and basically you have a bunch of vulnerability that are described uh, with some real world example and so on. So really uh, an awesome um, resources if you are uh, starting with that. I mean, you have all the link on the description uh, as usual. So that's the target. And right now what we're going to do is actually to launch, to, to launch Mitril uh, directly on it. So Mit Analyze Etherstore.sol. So that's the command line. And basically, if you are running that, you will get something like that. So let me put that right there. And um, I launch the command right there. And as you can see, I'm getting some results and some stuff. So let me show you uh, more uh, in deep uh, what are the results and why um, we are getting this result. We're going to put that uh, on the side uh, like that. So let's take a look. As you can see, I just launched the Metril tool and basically I'm getting a multiple results, multiple potential vulnerability. So uh, in that case, the first one is an integer arithmetic bug. So uh, you have the contract, you have the severity, you also have the SWC ID. Uh, so that's um, kind of like a database of um, classical vulnerability in, in solidity. Um, so uh, it's really uh, interesting. Then you have uh, like the uh, guest usage and so on, and you have the description of the vulnerability. So in that case, uh, there is some arithmetic operations that can overflow, um, and uh, an overflow and underflow uh, can be um, a, a real issue, especially when you are dealing with like um, amount of money uh, and so on, and balance in general. You have uh, which where it is and where uh, which line exactly, and as you can see, last withdraw time of the message sender. So we are getting some previously stored value, and we are adding plus one weeks. So that's a keyword uh, to to simplify the the stuff. Um, it's actually this uh, specific line uh, right there, I think. Yeah, this one. Okay. What is interesting uh, after that is you, uh, Metril, will give you all the requisites, I mean, all the, um, the basic state, uh, the initial state and the transaction sequence needed in order to uh, trigger this uh, arithmetic bug. So in that case, uh, as an initial state, we have a creator with a, a certain balance. 
Um, and then we have the attacker uh, with a balance and so on. And we have uh, another uh, guy, some guy uh, with uh, nothing on the balance and nothing on the storage. Okay. What you can see is the transaction sequence is the following. First of all, we have the uh, creator uh, that will uh, hold the, the stuff, create the contract and so on. And then we have um, the caller, the some guy, that will withdraw the phone uh, and provide a, a uint uh, 256 with, uh, and it will be this specific transaction data. So this transaction data, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the whole smart contract work. Uh, by the way, let me know if you want to learn more about how it works internally and so on. I'm planning to do like a video about um, reverse engineering of EVM bytecode, so you will understand exactly how it works uh, under the hood. Um, so basically, the TX data is, right there will be the address of the function you want to call. So in that case, it will be withdraw from. And as you can see, withdraw from is this one and uh, is taking an argument. Uh, after that, uh, you have some value. So in that case, uh, it seems that it doesn't really matter. The main idea is uh, if you are calling that twice, potentially you can trigger the bug. So let's take a look at the potential bug. What you will see is that um, this last withdraw time with the message sender with, uh, will be actually a value that will be set right there. So when you are doing the first call, you will initialize the um, last withdraw time uh, with your uh, message sender will be your own address. So basically, you will put some value uh, right there and it will be no. That means it will be the timestamp of the uh, transaction. Um, and basically, uh, um, what will uh, happen is that this value will be stored and later, when you are calling a second time withdraw fund, you will get access to this value and you're going to do an addition uh, on top of that. So in that case, the only way to uh, trigger this um, integer arithmetic bug is if basically the return value of a uh, no, that is basically a blockchain timestamp, um, you need to take a look at what is this value, will be stored at this point. And if you are doing that plus one week and you will and you are at like the maximum value, it will overflow. So in that case, is it possible? Um, it's only possible if basically no will return like something really close to the maximum value of a uint 256. So in that case, um, we need to check what is basically the, the, the range uh, and the type of value returned by uh, this one. Um, but yeah, it's pretty particular. Uh, it can be checked. Some things that you can do in every case is uh, just to be sure in that case will be uh, potentially to use like a, a safe function for the addition. Uh, you have, uh, for, for example, the safe math library uh, from uh, OpenZipline that is doing, uh, that is uh, really useful if you want to do like a safe mathematical operation and prevent any uh, overflow. So that could be something to, to fix. Potentially, there is no vulnerability, but at least we understand why Metril gives us this message. And, um, and we know what we need to check just to be sure uh, we are, there is no way to trigger this uh, vulnerability. So that was the first one. It was interesting. Let's take a look at the second one, dependence on predictable environment variable. So uh, that's uh, what I was telling you regarding the uh, no and uh, the no uh, keyword. Basically, um, no will uh, give us the value of block timestamp. And as you can see, the control flow decision is based on the block timestamp. It's especially right there. Since we are asking to get the no timestamp, uh, Metril is not able to know exactly what we're going to do with that. And in that case, since we have a require, if we are uh, we are getting access to this value, this time term, timestamp, sorry, and uh, depending on the case, either we will uh, revert the execution if the uh, require uh, is actually failing. Um, and if the require uh, is not failing, everything is fine, we will continue the, the, the execution of the rest of the smart contract. So it's clear in that case, in one case, based on the value, we will either 
go in one side, revert the smart contract, cancel the execution, or in the other side, we will continue the execution. So that's exactly what the, um, this um, vulnerability description is mentioning, the control flow, the where you are going um, in, the, in the smart contract. Uh, the decision of that is based on some uh, block timestamp, some environment variable provided by the uh, Ethereum um, blockchain. Um, so uh, that's really interesting. That's the reason why we have this, this vulnerability and why it could be an issue. It's basically um, when you have, uh, it's something that was really common in, in like earlier smart contract regarding um, gambling. And basically a lot of them was using the block timestamp to um, basically generate the do the, the randomness generation um, and uh, of course you can uh, determine that uh, in advance and uh, you can uh, in that case uh, make sure you you're gonna win all the time so that's why we, we absolutely don't want to use any environment variable for randomness or something really critical in that case it's not an issue um, since uh, we we are checking some some stuff and at least it, it makes sense uh, since we have some some limitation time of withdrawal so we need to get this information but at least we know uh, why uh, we are getting uh, what could be an issue and as you can see we are learning more and more about the potential vulnerability that can be uh, involved uh, in it in uh, in EVM smart contract. We have another one, external call to user supplied address. And this one is actually really, really interesting. Um, and that's uh, one of the vulnerability, uh, I mean, the main vulnerability of this smart contract. Um, so basically we have a call to a user supplied address. So that's this one, message sender call value. Uh, and we are um, providing some, um, data basically this stuff um, right there will be in charge to uh, send the money back to uh, the, the sender um, and um, the main issue with that is as the name suggests when we have an external message call to an address specified by the caller um, it's possible it will actually execute some arbitrary call on the other side so if your uh, account, the message sender, is actually a user, it's not an issue, like a um, um, personal account. But if it's a smart contract, uh, you can perfectly define some piece of code that will be executed by the smart contract. And in that case, uh, it's the classical example of um, uh, reentrancy vulnerability because when we are going right there, we're going to withdraw some money. We're going to get some money back from this uh, smart contract. If it's called by another smart contract, we're going to get the money and we can perfectly say, okay, when we are getting the money, I want you to call back this withdraw function. And by doing that, we will go at this point. We're going to call again this piece of code. So we're going to go again on this uh, piece uh, of um, Solidity code. And again, and again, and again. And we're going to loop forever right there without doing any modification on the balance of the sender. And that's the, the reentrancy vulnerability. So in that case, he is not telling us, okay, that's a real transit bug, there is a real bug and so on. He is just telling us, okay, right there, we are calling an external function uh, and um, it's something uh, to, to take care of because potentially some piece of code will be executed on the other side. So really important to take a look at that. And if you have this stuff combined with this one, um, basically, uh, sorry, it, this one, state accessed after external call. That's basically this one that is uh, like maybe more, um, that will define more specifically that it's a reentrancy bug. But this one is basically telling you, we are modifying the state of the smart contract after uh, doing uh, an external call. So uh, that's a classical pattern of uh, some reentrancy vulnerability. So we are getting the, the definition to prevent reentrancy issue, consider uh, accessing the state only before the call, um, especially if the callee is untrusted.
Um, alternatively, a reentrancy run lock can be used to prevent untrusted colleagues from reentering the contract um, in an intermediate state. So that's the kind of uh, solution you have. Uh, and basically, we are modifying the state right there. And the last vulnerability is basically the same, uh, but for uh, um, this specific line right there. Okay. So um, that's all. As you can see, uh, we are getting, uh, I don't know, like one, two, three, four, five. Five vulnerabilities, I think, that have been detected by Metril. Um, some of them are uh, false positive uh, in all cases, uh, but still interesting to uh, understand them. And maybe uh, there is some way to uh, prevent uh, having this, um, this uh, questioning regarding the security uh, of this one. And uh, of course, uh, some of them was completely legit because there is a reentrance vulnerability in this smart contract. So uh, I hope uh, it was like uh, an interesting example for you and you learn uh, some, some stuff. Of course, uh, take a look at uh, definitely all these uh, blog posts and different vulnerabilities. You have uh, a bunch of uh, resources. I will maybe also do uh, another video uh, dedicated to like what are the best resources if you want to learn more regarding um, Solidity vulnerability. Um, you can also take a look at the Metril documentation. You will get a, a lot of stuff, especially regarding like the different command line and usage you, you can um, use uh, and um, uh, exploit um, in terms of uh, arguments that are really interesting in Metril. And finally, uh, if you want to have all the code, the resources and so on, and also the, the other one, uh, please uh, consider uh, enroll on my um, free um, courses. Uh, and basically, each time I will um, add some new stuff regarding uh, Ethereum security, uh, you will be aware and I will send you an email to uh, let you know. Let me know if you have any question uh, regarding that and any other proposal of tool or uh, smart contract and, and so on. Uh, I'm really looking forward. And uh, yeah, subscribe and uh, see you in uh, another video. Bye.